Hello everyone, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. I am Blake Rudis and today we are going to talk about the power of curves. The curves uh, adjustment layer is absolutely incredible, not only for correcting your white balance and affecting things on a global level, but getting things into a more local level, like your highlights, midtones, and shadows. All right, enough of the intro, let's get right into this. I'm going to select the curves layer by pressing down here on this uh, little adjustment layer icon and press curves. You can also get to that by, uh, if you have your adjustments panel open next to your history and your mask, you can go ahead and click on it there too. Uh, I don't know how you have your setup, so for sake of argument, click down here, go to curves. All right, now curves has these three uh, eyedroppers here. And those three eyedroppers are used to select what is white, what you're telling Photoshop to tell this image is white, what you're telling Photoshop to tell this image is, is medium gray, and what you're telling Photoshop to say is black. But how do you find those areas? Pretty pretty cool little tricks. You can grab the little uh, white portion of the of the curves adjustment here, which is just like your levels adjustment without that midtone, um, and you can drag it down, and that's going to tell you what's black. So that's telling me right now that these areas are the closest areas to what should be considered black. So I'm going to select the darkest one and then zoom back out. Now I'm going to do the same thing for white, but I'm going to grab the black triangle, bring that over to the white side and see what is white. Now, again, I'm going to these this blown white area that you're seeing here, that is a blown highlight, that is a blown white area. There's not much information there. So I'm going to select an area that has a little bit of information within that, which is one of these little pixelated dots here. So when I click the white slider, I want to tell this that that is white. That's what I love about Photoshop CS5. It gives you this grid of pixels. It's amazing. So that's a little bit better. But how do we find 50% gray? Um, there's an awesome uh, technique that Scott Kelby shows in uh, Photoshop CS5 for photographer's book. It's an amazing book. I'm not going to show that because that's a whole tutorial in and of itself and it's somebody else's. So I have a, a pretty quick down and dirty way that I do it. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is click the information panel and look at the info of the colors. So click on window and click info. That's going to bring up your info uh, panel. And in that info panel, when we have the gray eyedropper selected and we start cruising around here, it's showing us right here what is red, what is green, and what is blue in that single pixel that we're hovering over. So right now it's 109 red, it's 85 green, and 57 blue. So it's pretty high on the red side. What we're looking for is something that's about 123 um, or 120, between 123 and 128-ish, if we can get to that comfortable level of what is gray. Because um, 255 is the highest amount of color uh, that can be in, in an image, which is white. And then zero is the absence of color, so zero being nothing. We want to find approximately 125 for each color or as close as we can get. So I'm going to zoom in real close on an area that I think is already pretty much 50% gray. Now I'm going to select that gray eyedropper and I'm going to cruise around and see what's close. That's 138, 125, and 107 on the blue. So it's kind of low on the blue, but it might be our best bet. I think that's probably going to be our best bet. It's somewhere right around here. So I'll take I just told Photoshop that that's 50% gray. It did a pretty decent job. I mean, there's some still some some uh, blown areas here, but that's from the tone mapping process. We can try and make that white and see what happens. But what that's pretty much going to do is give us a, a more red. So we'll just press Alt Z or Control Z. Sorry to go back. Or if not, we'll just go back. Okay. Okay. So. Now, how else can we use curves, the power of curves, to adjust this image? Well, what I like to do is um, break the image down into highlights, midtones, and shadows. So to do that, we're going to click on the background, we're going to go to select, we're going to go to color range, and then go to shadows. Press OK. Make a curves adjustment layer, and rename this shadows. Again, do the same thing, select, color range, midtones make a curves adjustment and call this midtones or mid just for speed select color range highlights and make another curves and call this highlights I'll just call it high hi um, so now we can independently 
adjust just the shadows. But you notice how it gets kind of dingy up here. If we go ahead and take this away, let's see what, how that would look. Uh, we can't really see it. Um, but it starts to get kind of dingy because the uh, the selection is taking a selection of every pixel that it's seeing. So it's, it's kind of uh, splotchy. So we can change that by going to the mask option up here, selecting the mask individually, and feathering that mask in a couple pixels. We'll go two pixels. Yeah, make it three. I see there's a lot of stuff going on there. Same thing with the mids. We'll make that three also. Three pixels is pretty good for this. Okay, now we can, ooh, that looks bad on the shadows. Eh, yuck, okay. All right, so if you pull down on this, uh, the lower quadrant of the curves, you're applying that curve to the darkest areas of the darks now because we have the shadow selected. Now if you move the uh, quadrant in the top, you're adjusting the lightest areas of the darkest areas because we're in the shadows. So you can really modify um, each and every individual area of your photo by applying a different curve into it so you can independently adjust those areas. So you see how we can start controlling those those blown out highlights now and making them uh, more natural looking by selecting the highlights individually. So if we go ahead and deselect all of these, that's a pretty decent uh, start to something that we could post process with. But I've got a couple, couple minutes left before uh, YouTube tells me I, my video is too long, so I'm going to show you something else that's pretty cool. So how do we use this in a more creative way? I've got a texture here of um, my toaster oven. This is a piece of foil that we have on our toaster oven that we spray with oil. And you see these two spots here. That's usually where we put our biscuits every night. Uh, we don't really eat biscuits every night, but we do like biscuits. So, And after a while, it becomes a cool texture. Not just a, a functional area to put my biscuit, but it becomes a cool texture. So um, let me go ahead and delete this. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to go to Select, Color Range, and go to Shadows do a curves adjustment and we can name this uh, biscuit shadow or something I know it's not a biscuit but now we're gonna drag this right up and on top of our image so it's not showing you anything right now right just go ahead and grab that and pull it up a little bit and now we're starting to see a little bit of texture coming through from our original image or our original texture pretty cool huh I don't know it's like a dollar fifty trick um, <clears throat> you can tell all your friends. It's a pretty neat way to add a little bit of, uh, I guess, vintage to this photo. But we can also take it another step further. We can add a little bit of texture into that vintage uh, effect that we've got going on. So here's a texture I have. It looks like uh, uh, old painted wood. It's probably my deck. I don't know. Um, I said deck. Yeah, sickos. And grab that and pull that right in on top of our image. And because it's a texture, I'm just going to grab it and pull it and bring it over top. Now, I'm going to inlay this into the biscuit shadow by pressing the Alt key. And then I'm going to rename or change this to another blend mode, something like overlay or soft light. Soft light's probably good. So now I've got a cool, like, vintage looking texture added onto this photo. And you can modify the, the intensity of it, obviously, by. Um, controlling the fill or the opacity of that layer. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. hope it helped uh, learn a little bit more about the power of curves and how powerful curves can be and how you can selectively uh, modify the shadows, uh, highlights, and midtones in an image and actually have full control over them so that it's non-destructive editing. At any time, you can delete any one of those layers if you didn't like what was happening there and you're back to your original square one product. I hope this helped you. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, if you like it, comment. If you don't like it, uh, comment. That's fine. I don't have to approve it. And um, if you have anything that can make this tutorial better or any tutorials in the future better, please feel free to contact me because I'm here to make these tutorials for you. Again, this is EverydayHDR.com. I am Blake Rudis, and that was The Power of Curves. Take it easy, everyone. Have a happy weekend HDRing.